Hello and welcome to the course, an introduction to technical analysis. Let's begin by flipping this coin. The first flip gets us. That's a heads. Let's do it again. And this time we get, oh, it's a heads again. The third time we get a heads yet again. Unusual. Let's do it again. The fourth flip gets us a that's a heads again. The fifth time, let's try it again. And this time we get a heads yet again. Surprised? You should be, because that happening five heads in a row is very unlikely. Actually, the chances of that happening is 3.125%. So why are we flipping coins? And what does it have to do with technical analysis? A lot more than you think. Technical analysis is about probability. It's about raw numerical data crunching. It's also about patterns and spotting that trend early. Now, there are some similarities between flipping a coin and technical analysis. And one is that you can make an objective decision without worrying about any subjective factors. So you know exactly the probability in advance. Now, what I mean by this is when you flip a coin, you know exactly what the probability is. It's 50-50% of it landing on either side. Technical analysis works the pretty much the same way. When you put on that trade, you are basing your decision on statistics, on pure maths, on numbers. So you know the probability in advance. Now there's one thing about technical analysis that is not accounted for in a coin flip. And that is human behavior. Think about it. What moves a stock? Mostly, it is traders and investors basing on their perception. And that's the key word here, the perception of the investors. It could be greed, it could be fear, it could be indecision, which is reflecting in price. And what does technical analysis do? It aims to quantify this behavior. Well now, I have a confession. I cheated. That coin that I was flipping was a weighted coin, such that one side was heavier than the other meaning that there was an 80% probability of the coin landing on heads. Now, knowing that information, would you choose between heads or tails? The answer is obvious, right? Heads. Now, let's see how this concept can be applied to stocks. Let's suppose, based on historical data, you find something fascinating in a stock. Every time the stock went up 5%, it was followed by a 3% fall. And this happened again and again and again. Suppose you plotted its price movement on a chart and it looked something like this. Now I know what you're thinking. In the real world, such a consistent pattern almost never appears. But nevertheless, patterns do emerge. See that red dot in the end? Assume that point in time is now and you have the option to buy or sell. What would you do? The answer is obvious. You would buy. And that, in a nutshell, is an oversimplified way of explaining what technical analysis is. You plot prices on a chart, spot the trend or pattern emerging again and again, and make an objective decision to buy or sell, which is based on human behavior, which is factored in that price. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to focus only on trends, but this lesson is going to be the three big assumptions of technical analysis. So let's get right to it. Number one. History repeats itself. When an event happens again and again and again, that's a pattern. A pattern emerges. And what does technical analysis do? It finds these patterns throughout historical price data of stocks and indices, and then you can validate them through this process. This is probably one of the main reasons why traders are attracted to technical analysis so much. It removes any subjectivity, any guesswork. You're working on maths, probability, and proper statistics. It's an objective way to decide to buy and sell. Number two, all relevant information is already priced in. Now, what do we mean by that? Let's take an actual example of Nifty. That's the index, which is the average of the top 50 stocks on the National Stock Exchange. This chart is of 2010. Okay, so as we can see, Nifty is appreciated 62% over five years. 
Since 2014, it's done pretty well. The overall trend is positive, but there's been a slight dip in the recent past. That's all fine and dandy, but now what? What do you look to make the decision whether you go long or short? Now, let's try to understand this with an example. Suppose the Reserve Bank of India is about to announce a rate change in the headline interest rate. Now, we all know that the headline interest rate can change everything from the economy to sectors and companies in specific. The fundamental analyst will try to figure out this complex web of information and he will ask himself, is the Nifty overvalued or undervalued after this decision? He'll also try to find out the intrinsic value of Nifty. Now, the technical analyst, on the other hand, does not look at that. He tries to figure out what is happening now. He figures out that if the information is relevant, it will reflect in price immediately. So if it's a positive announcement, prices are likely to go up. And if it fits his trading system, he will buy as per plan. If it's bad news and he sees a sell signal according to his objective system, he will sell. That's the difference between both of them. Now, the next time you look at the television and you find an analyst screaming buy or sell, try to ask yourself, what is he basing his decisions on? Fundamentals of a company matter. We have fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Now, what's funny is that every technical analyst usually discounts fundamentals completely and vice versa. The fundamentals guy will not look at charts at all. To us at Trade Academy, that seems crazy. How could you do that? They both have strengths and weaknesses and you could use them both to your advantage. For example, let's talk about DLF. It was in a beautiful uptrend. The technical analyst would have bought, profited quite a bit, but he would have had to deal with this enormous crash. Now the average investor would find this a real mess and probably even lose money. However, if you employed fundamental analysis First, you would have found out that DLF is not that fundamentally sound. There were other candidates such as Colgate Palmolive, much better on the books. Financially, it's growing 15% a year every year and has no debt. Now, suppose you traded Colgate Palmolive using technicals. Look at the chart. It's a beautiful uptrend. You would have got two entries and you would have still made a massive profit without having to worry about a crash. You see, Employing fundamentals and technicals, they complement each other. And isn't that a nicer way to invest, a more safe way, a risk averse way to invest your money? So what have we learned so far? We learned that technical analysis allows you to make an objective decision on your trading. So without second guessing, you can actually make a trade based on probability, based on statistics. We also learned the three core tenets that form technical analysis. That is, history repeats itself, all relevant information is reflected in price, and fundamentals matter. Now, the next lesson is actually really interesting. We will introduce you to the concept of trends. And it's beautiful because there is a relationship between the biggest investors, the economy, and the Indian stock market. Actually, these concepts can be used worldwide. And what's exciting is that we'll be able to show you how you can trade using these concepts. Intrigued? I'll see you in the next lesson.